Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor and pleasure for me to join you here today. Uh, thanks for Professor Moon's kind invitation to speak to you at this seminar. And I'm grateful to uh, have known Dr. Moon for a long time since she went to Maryland to join my research lab at University of Maryland uh, for a short period of time, uh, a year actually. And then uh, we have been friends, uh, close friends uh, with family and everybody. So with all the things I have been doing recently, I would like to share with you the topic of seminar today is soil transformation and ecosystem reintegration. If I ask you this word, apple, what came to your mind? Is it something like this <laughs> or something like this or even better, something like this? And this is the apple grown in the orchard near my house at Maryland. And, uh, but have you really know what a tree should look like? It should actually look like this. A healthy apple tree should look like this. The roots in the soil should be twice as big as the branches on top. And this is what a healthy plant should look like. And with the modernization of today's society, we have lost a lot of uh, grounds for the plants to grow in. So this is a research done by my friend uh, they talk about the vital soil organisms being harmed by pesticides and study has shown that these wonderful uh, invertebrates were harmed by what we've done so far. And the University of Delaware and University of Maryland professor worked together to come to this conclusion that there are many, many uh, pesticides used have damaged the life in the soil. So the total <clears throat> focus of my topic today is about eco-agriculture. What if we learn how to take the natural and civilian waste and transform them into a good soil that is rich in microbes, which can be used to restore the soil lifeliness, which is abundant of ecosystem underneath the soil, and they can actually support the growth of the plants. And I'll tell you how. And so we can eliminate the use of pesticides, synthetic fertilizers, et cetera, et cetera. And this is, in my view, the real food safety to human beings. And this cycle goes on and on. So we can reach a really, really eco-based agricultural system, which is the solution for sustainable food and agriculture. So first, allow me to talk about soil transformation, how we can utilize abundant natural and civilian waste. Okay, to begin with, let's look at this picture. Many of you probably have better knowledge than I do when I was little, learning about photosynthesis. And I remember when I was in the elementary school, my professor told us that, oh, okay, the plant is very nice to human beings. They take this carbon dioxide, CO2, in the air and make it into O2 for human beings, into oxygen for us to breathe. And my, my question to the professor was, how nice are we to the plants? Why do they, why are they so nice to us to take carbon dioxide, make it into oxygen for us? And then my question was, where does the C go? The carbon in carbon dioxide. And they also, the roots also take on water from the soil. So where does the H go? The H, that's the hydrogen. So in reality, in the last 10 years or so, I discovered more about the real photosynthesis and found that the plants itself only use about 40 to 50% of the energy. The remaining of the energy become extra dates that they extrude to the soil uh, to feed these microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi, and nematodes. And therefore subsequently, uh, created a soil food web. And that's how abundant it is in the soil. And that is what supports the growth of plants. Another angle to look at things is the biological succession in the soil. 
when a farm a, a land is covered by uh, volcano lava, you know, explosion, they cover there's no life in there. However, when they started to grow back, when there are only short grass on the left side of this picture, underneath the ground, it's 100% bacteria, nothing else. As they grow taller and taller and then evolve into the very abundant forest tree, and inside the forest, you will see in the soil is 100% fungi. So how these bacteria relay their biological succession into fungi, we are still learning more about it. But if human beings are to grow uh, the fruit trees and any other crops, we are most likely in the middle. So how can we create a earth soil that is abundant and with a balance of bacteria and the right kind of fungus in there? So that can support the growth of the plants. I've been working very closely with uh, Mr. Ben Freeton, the guy standing next to me. We did a lot of uh, workshop researches uh, around the world in the last few years. And uh, from what you can see here, this is a village in Southern China. We just taught them to take the green material, which is the weeds from the community, mixed with some uh, brown material that's like rice hog, rice stalks, all these mixed together and some wood chips. And as we control the moisture and the right composition, overnight in 24 hours, the temperature can reach about 75 degrees Celsius, which is enough to break down the uh, seeds of the weed, also to break down the biological material that in the plants, the cellulosic material. And at the same time, foster the growth of very good microorganisms because we have the airy situation, the air is breathing. So this is totally aerobic. Yeah, this sufficient supply of airflow into this compost. And this is my friend Tom sitting next to me in the big pile of the stock, which the government of China forbid everyone to burn it because it caused air pollution and other hazards. Okay. So when I visited him uh, 2017, after uh, Christmas, it's only three degrees Celsius in Taizhou, that's uh, west of Shanghai. And so I told him that we can to take the uh, rice stock, mix with water lily that we harvest from the river and blend it together and we can create very beautiful compost. And from there, we also did some research. We found that the a bacteria can be made into this little tiny balls that can be used to facilitate other composting process. And also did some biological sequencing. You can see from the data here that there's a family of different kind of bacteria that are present in there. So it's a cohort of the actions by many, many different microorganisms. So this is the resulting soil. On the right hand side is what we call the conventional. So it's the machine tilling. They just keep putting the fertilizers, but we don't care about life in there. But on the left hand side here is the organic soil. You can see the color is totally different as well as the structure. If you let it go further, you can go down and then you can find out that the finished compost would have very abundant amount of filaments from the fung fungi growth in there. It's just showing that there are a lot of uh, biological activities going on, different enzymes being used, being created by these microorganisms to help facilitate the transformation of these plant material into the fertilizers that's organic and very, very rich in nutrients. So this is a picture of me training people in Southern Taiwan. Uh, also teach the farmer using the same thing, but we use the fallen leaves which is brown in color, mixed with some uh, freshly cut uh, grass. And that's a very good composition there. And also I did some training in Hainan Island. And this is the island on a rainy day, but we, were man we managed to train a lot of people. And the finished uh, compost is right here at the lower bottom. You can see it's very mature, very dark in color. And that's exactly what the plants need to grow. And this is showing you the recent project I am involved with, and it, in fact, it's going to begin in the next week or so. 
that these are the water plants that grow in, in the species that are grown from uh, invasive species. And they're so tall, taller than uh, a, a person's height, it's about two meters tall. And the farmers have difficulties handling them. So what we are doing is we take them and try to transform them into uh, fertilizers and compost that uh, can be used and returned to the farmer to foster the growth of the plants in their garden, in their uh, facility, in the city. So this is a very big project that we are involved now. And another angle to look at the uh, soil ecology, Aristotle, uh, 3000 years ago, uh, Greek philosopher, he had the wisdom to call the earthworm the intestine of the earth. And the intestine of the earth, what do they do? They are so abundant in the soil, they can create a lot of different things. And let's show me, let me show you how we are handling it. If you grow them in a container like this, okay, this is what we call the earthworm tower. And you grow them inside and then at the top, you feed them with the vegetables from your daily cooking, from your kitchen. And over time, they can change into this very, very rich and moist uh, vermicompost. The word vermicompost, meaning that the, the uh, earthworm in it and use that to transform your food waste into something abundant in nutrients. And another interesting is that they can create these uh, compost tea. That's all the moisture from the leafy vegetables after the earthworm digest them, they become liquid-like and then can be collected. And one thing funny about this is that they are straight dogs. The dog with skin diseases running on the street, they come and they don't drink other water. They look for the earthworm water. And then they can, you know, over three months or four months time period, all the skin diseases are gone. And it's amazing how the uh, animals know what's good and what they need to cure the disease on their skin. And therefore, we are looking for ways to enrich the compost to see what else can the plants use instead of the uh, synthetic fertilizer sold by chemical companies. And these are the marine fowlers and small creatures attached to the, the net the fishermen use, sometimes to the uh, power plants that the, 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 um, the ships, the ships, the boats, and the vehicles travel on ocean. These are like the barnacles and different kinds of creatures. And they are rich in different mineral contents. So we were able to take them and then use them to uh, enrich our uh, biological transformation. And let me show you a little movie. This is what we are doing on a small farm uh, near university that I work with. And you can see this little tiny white thing, these white tubes. These are my earthworm towel. I use them to put earthworm in there and we are feeding them with vegetables and students are working with me on that. And over time, the earthworms inside the tower can be fed and grow and then they can sneak out to a different part of the tube. So, and then at the lower portion, you can see the earthworms are grow very, very happily and they are healthy and strong. You can see the size of them, the color of them. And they can sneak out through the different multiple holes that I drill on the side of it. And they can go and you know, loosen the soil around it. So it's a very good tool to transform the compaction caused by machine farming into a very, very rich soil for farm use. So what about ecosystem reintegration? What do I mean by that? It's regenerative agriculture with soil liveliness index that I will talk about. What we are seeing here, this is the root of a plant. And this very, very silky fibers around it is the filaments by different fungi, okay? And what it does is that it's, it works together with the roots and help the roots reach out to look for water, look for phosphorus, nitrogen, all different nutrients so that they don't need any chemicals. 
okay? And therefore, they, this abundant microorganism can help you reach a very healthy tree, just like that. My dear friend, Dr. Lau at Ohio State University, he said that a mere 2% increase in the carbon content of the plant soil could offset 100% of all greenhouse gas emissions. And this is a very important concept as people are worrying about how much carbon dioxide we're producing. But if you can keep the soil alive inside the soil, there are many wonderful things that can happen. So what I want to talk about is that we need to bring ecology back into agriculture. And this is the definition of regenerative agriculture. We can generate more naturally grown crops from this type of operation. This is my friend's house uh, that you can wash your hand from the left hand side here. And the water after you wash your hand is not wasted. It goes into the compost. And this compost over time, the slow compost, uh, over, over about five, six months, they can turn into very rich uh, material. And you can use it in different kinds of landscaping, in the gardening, and these are all made of compost. And later on, this can become very good flower, but you can plant anything, vegetables, flowers, and they are all there. Okay, so this is very, very nice setup. What is soil liveliness index? This is something that uh, you know America is using. Currently, we are measuring the soil with only like pH or heavy metals or different index. But these are all chemistry or physical indexes. There's very rare people talk about the life underneath the soil. Remember, the definition between soil and sand is that sand has no life in there. And soil is the one with life inside. And that's how we call it soil. So this is a chart provided by the uh, University of Colorado that they have been doing some research and then show us that this is the report to see how many lives are inside the soil samples. And I wish to do the same in China to help them. And also I wish to do that in different parts of the world. And I hope that Korea one day can also have in the near future that can create something similar to revitalize your soil for agricultural use. So in a nutshell, I want to take the natural and civilian waste at the top, transform that into soil with rich microbes, and then restore the soil liveliness in hope that we can eliminate the pesticide and synthetic fertilizers and reach a real food safety to human beings. So we don't have to rely on inspection, testing of all these pesticide residues because we won't have that in the system. And the farmers by growing these healthy crops, they can have a good income for the family and they can you know, have a better health themselves because they have to spray all these toxic chemicals. Therefore, I'd like to conclude my talk today, although it's kind of short, but give you an overview and important concept that we cannot survive any longer with continued abuse of the farmland by using all, all these chemicals, pesticides, synthetic fertilizers. What we can do is now to respect nature and go back to what we should be doing long time ago and help us get a better future for us, for our children, for our grandkids, and hopefully that will be in your future to see. And I'll be glad to answer any question if you have. Thank you so much. Uh